All right, we're live. Good morning to everybody in the mastermind. Today, we're going to be talking about maybe, maybe the, the most important thing in our business, which is confidence. And so I've got a bunch of notes. But before we jump into that, gentlemen, good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Good to get the crew back together. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. colin has got a special little drink. And so yep. I think all will be well. All's good. So this is, so here's a couple things on to dive into confidence. You know, I think that when you sell a service, that's what the consumer is buying. That's what we're selling is confidence, you know, because there's nothing tangible at a listing appointment for the consumer to to grab to to hold on to because nothing has occurred yet. And I love the thought of like sales is just the transference of belief or the transference like of of conviction. Mm -hmm. And it is so true. Does the seller believe in you? And that's what they signed the contract on. No, I just believe that Colton is going to do a better job than Ben. Based on what? Oh, that's just how I felt. Got it, right? Th th and so it's all confidence. Yeah. I don't know if you guys see it differently, but then I, I've got like four things to break down in great detail on how an agent can build confidence because that's the question that the three of us probably get on a daily basis. But that's why exactly. I see confidence. I agree 100%. Let's get yeah. into it. Let's get into it. All right. So the, the, the question is, okay, Brandon, I get it. I understand I need confidence. How do I get confidence? This actually came up on the coaching call Monday, right? Remember, Ben? That's right. Yep. It was probably the theme of the call that was in a two-hour session was, was half the call. Yeah, it seems so, to be the theme of the year, honestly. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's true, you know? And so, all right. I, I look at this as a four-step process. So step one, I'm going to call the the confidence account all right and a lot of this comes out of dr nate zinzer's book the confident mind i don't know if you guys have ever read that but it's a phenomenal book on how to build confidence so the confidence account it has four components to the confidence account one is following through on your commitments two is your effort your daily effort. Three is evidence of success. And then four is proof of progress. So let's break this down. Number one, following through on your commitments. So we're talking about building self-confidence. Well, in step one, Dr. Nate Zimmer talks about the, the importance of following through on what you told yourself you would do. To me, it starts off with winning the battle of the bed. If you say you're going to wake up early tomorrow morning and get after it. And the second that alarm clock goes off, you can't, you immediately put yourself in a position where you're fighting against the day instead of winning the day. And there's nothing worse than you failing to follow through on your commitments. That's like the foundation of self-confidence. If you don't even believe in you, how in the world can we expect anybody else to believe in us? So that it all starts with, are you following through on what you tell yourself you're going to do? That's number one. I'll go through all four and then I'll kind of get your guys' thoughts. Cool. Then number two, what, what is the effort that you're putting forth specifically around practicing your craft? That's the effort that, that he talks about in the book. What is the effort you're putting forth? In, in our world of real estate sales, how often are you practicing your listing presentation? He talks a lot about this in the book because when you go to perform, he worked with Eli Manning a lot and helped him win a, a couple Super Bowls. And it's like when you get on the field, how you perform on the field is based on your level of preparation. And when I ask a real estate agent, can you send me just the last copy of your recording of your of your listing presentation they say the last recording i've never recorded that in my life exactly so what is your level of effort when it comes to practicing your skills and we'll talk about why that's important in, in, in a second 
And then number three, with the confidence account, right? These are all deposits into the confidence account, is evidence of success based on that effort. So as an example of that, we can pull back and say, okay, because I've put forth such great effort in, I put so much work in practicing my listing presentation, when I go on an actual presentation, oh my gosh, it goes so much better. I have evidence that the effort that I put forth following through on my commitments is actually paying dividends. I'm not talking about winning or losing the listing. I'm talking about you felt that it went better. That's what I mean. And then number four is proof of progress. So because of all the hard work, you actually get a win. You go to a listing appointment and you get a contract signed because of all the hard work. So that's what he means by the first part of the framework, which is the confidence account, is kind of following those four parts. You guys want to add anything to those? I think the the biggest thing is that I hear often is, okay, I'm brand new here. How do I get confidence if I haven't even done it? How do I build that muscle? And I think what we what we talk about with with follow through is just taking maybe borrowing from other things like you're talking about making the bed. I do what I say I'm going to do. I say I go to the gym every day. I go to the gym, right? So you you steal those other areas of your life where you do what you say you're going to do and you carry those in to something that you're new with. Yeah. yeah. Well, well the the myth is I think people don't understand the science behind confidence. They feel like confidence comes like after something. Like to your point, most real estate agents, well, how can I be confident if I've never done this before? They believe that confidence comes as a result of uh, experience. It comes through the dedication of practicing your craft. Yeah, That's how I'd answer that question, Ben, is if, if you practice and put your listing presentation on camera every day for 30 days, do, you, you, you will go from feeling so insecure to I can't wait to get in front of a prospect. I yeah. can't wait for the day where I can get on stage and perform because you're so well prepared. Yeah. That's what the book, and we're going to talk about that later in, in this in this episode. That's been the answer. The answer oh. is proper preparation prevents poor performance. That's mm -hmm. what we're talking about. What is the level of effort you're giving up front before the performance will determine the level of your performance? Go ahead, yeah. Colton, you want to add something? Yeah, and it, it, you know, there's a lot of people would say there, you know, we've all heard the saying, fake it till you make it, right? And that even is, is not, I, I don't love that saying because you, again, you're faking it. You need to be it until you That's see right. it. Do the actions, prepare, you know, do you have a listing contract in your trunk? Do you have a lockbox in your trunk? Like, are you doing these things to be ready and, and being the type of agent before you know, you've seen the results every day. It's a great point. If, if, if an agent, an agent should have no confidence if they go to a presentation and the first time they've ever gone through their listing presentation <laughs> is practicing on the actual client. They yeah. should be pooping their pants. They should be dripping in sweat. It shouldn't feel very good, right? And so I think we... The first thing is we have to make deposits into this confidence account so I can pull withdrawals from that account when I need it, when I'm on the field. And our field is at the listing presentation so that you can perform to your greatest potential based on your level of preparation. Does that make sense? It does. Absolutely. And you have to, uh, you know... I, I love the, how, how, how do you say it again? The, the uh, confidence account, yeah. right? It's like, it's, it's so true because you can't just go into a grocery store and just take what you want. If you don't have any money in your account, you have to do the right things to earn the money to be able to buy those. And so you can't just have the confidence until you've done the things to earn it in, in filling that up. That's um, right. And that's why yeah. I love it. It's, it's a confidence bank account. Yep. And most people's confidence bank account is empty. 
It's oh, it's it's overdrawn, quite frankly. There isn't anything to withdraw. So when they need it, of course they don't feel confident because that's what that's what um, Nate Zinzer talks about in the confident mind. Is like, how many deposits are you making in there on a daily basis? And so again, just to recap, and I'll go to step two is following through on commitments is number one. Then number two, effort around your preparation daily. So are you writing out your listing presentation script? Are you getting it on camera? Do you have a role play partner? To which extent are you practicing that presentation? Number three, are can you pull evidence of success because of that practice? So can you come onto this podcast right now and deliver a world-class listing presentation because of the practice? Right. And then number four, pulling from past, you know, uh, uh, proof that you have that you're making actual progress, because maybe step one is, well, I'm going to start learning this seven step presentation that we train one step at a time. And I have proof because I have this thing on camera. I can go back with my role play partner two weeks ago. Ben, to your point, I've never I'm a brand new agent, never been on a presentation yet. Great. You can look back a, 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 a month ago. And then look at the game film now and say, I've come night night and day. That's proof that I'm making progress. Now, on to step two. The second thing that we have to do is then journal. This is a recommendation. Some people might say, oh, that's foo-foo. Fine, don't do it. I'll tell you what the elite do, what the 1% do, is to journal based on those four things. Mm -hmm. How did I do today in those four things? Did I follow through on my commitments today? We journal it. Yes, no, maybe so. Why or why not? Perfect. Two, what was my level of effort in practice today? Did I lay it all on the field or did I skip practice today? Practice, it's like Alan Averson talks about, right? Practice? We're talking about practice? Yeah, we're talking about fucking practice. That's what we're talking about. Cool. And then you journal, what were some wins that I can pull from that I've deposited into my confidence account? And then what were some things that gave me actual proof that I am making progress? So that'd be number two is to journal those things, to write them down. I don't know for you guys, but when I look back on things that I've journaled five years ago and I say, oh my gosh, I remember feeling that way and how much confidence that gives me to see how far I've come. That to me is the power of daily journaling. Mm. I, yeah, I agree. There, I mean, there's a quote that's coming to mind. Go ahead, Colton. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. There's a, there's a quote that comes to mind. I think you could like intertwine it into this with um, it, it's success is never owned. It is rented and the rent is due every day. And right. you could put the same thing in about confidence. Confidence is never owned. It's rented. The rent is due every day. And us journaling is just validating I paid my rent today. Like right. it's in the bank. I'm ready to go. And by us rehashing that, it's just like we talk about tracking. It's like we you track what's important to you. So if you're every day confirming to yourself that you paid the rent, but tomorrow you're going to do the same thing, it's you're never arriving. Um, you're just going to build that bank account to a point where you're just, it doesn't, you don't even need confidence. You're so certain. That's another thing uh, my dad always told me. He's like, yeah, boys are confident. Men are certain. Mm. So you have so much confidence. You've done it so many times. You know, no matter what, like I'm certain I will deliver in a new field, old field, whatever. Yeah, it's great. Cole, did you want to add something? Yeah, it's it, the other thing journaling lets you do two things, not only like to see the progress you've made, which is great, you know, to look back and be like, wow, you know, I've come so far, but also to have you understand um, that you you still have a long way to go. I, I mean, I'm sure there's always been times in our lives when we're learning, you think you're the the the, the hot stuff, you know, you know, you I'm, I'm so good at this. And then you look back on that version of yourself like, man, that guy didn't know anything. And just yeah. keeping that in mind, so you you keep, take that lid off of your potential, you know, so you can see that you know I'm I, I know my stuff, but I don't know it all, and, and and it allows you to keep growing, and it also lets you recognize patterns. You know, I love looking back on journals or entries I've made of like a problem I was trying to work through, or just like confronting myself, and I'm like, man, you know what? Like that's still kind of showing up, and and it allows you to see your patterns um, from a different perspective as well. 
Yeah, that's and a really good one point. More thing, one more thing on that is just the difference between confidence and ego, right? That's right. And, and the thing I love about confidence and, and talking about journaling is it's all about who I am. It has nothing to do with anybody else. So it's me like being really understanding who I am and what I'm doing. Ego is comparing yourself to somebody else and saying, I'm better than that person. Where when we're looking at our journal, we're just comparing ourselves to ourselves and constantly getting better, constantly validating who we were made to be, what we're, our gifts and talents are. Yeah, it's great. So I'm going to move on to the third part of this framework. Th this is probably, well, there's a couple really good pieces here, but so in, in part three, it's what, it's what the author calls the pre-performance framework. And I love it. There's three parts to it there. It's uh, he calls it C B A. So the C stands for cueing your conviction. The B stands uh, for breathing, breathe your body. And then A is attach your attention. So starting off with cueing your conviction. The, the, the great thing about this, and I love this, is that the nervous butterflies that we feel when we're about to perform, you're going to go on stage and, and give a talk, you're going to go to a listing presentation, you're playing in a basketball game, those butterflies, understanding that that's normal, but here's the best part about this. This is what I love. We talk a lot about putting people in a position or putting yourself in a position to perform means that the butterflies that you feel, the nerves, is actually the feeling that we need to seek out. That's right. That most of us don't get often enough. Why? Because we're in a comfort zone. And, oh. and I absolutely love this, that instead of those nervous butterflies and you're like, man, I don't like that feeling, letting that actually be proof that what you are about to do is the thing that's making you get better. Arnold I love Palmer, it. Arnold Palmer, one of the greatest golfers ever, said the day that I don't get butterflies on the first tee is the day I quit the game. Oh, awesome. so good. <laughs> that's exactly what the book talks about. And, and I feel it too. You know, it's like, that feeling is like something we have to like seek out and embrace that like that's really when you know okay this is what this is what i'm testing myself what i'm made of you know this is why this is how i earn a living mm -hmm. and i think to be honest most real estate agents rarely feel it because they're just living in a comfort zone and then they you could you could argue that the number of times an agent feels nervous butterflies is a direct reflection to their income. That's the way I look at it. And it's the same thing with professional speakers. It's the same thing for pro professional athletes. You know, Eli Manning talks about that in the book, like, dude, just like Arnold Palmer. When I step on the field, you know, I'm, those nervous butterflies are, are going like crazy every single time. Well, that's how he earns millions and millions of dollars. Right. And so if you look at real estate agents, it's like, well, they look at that feeling as a negative. And so they tried to avoid it at all cost. I don't want to feel uncomfortable. Um, and so anyway, it's an interesting thing with cueing your conviction. Go ahead, Colton. It, it's it's so true to where I didn't get paid millions and millions of dollars, but I, I played football in high school. And, and to this day, anytime I go to some type, like my sister's graduation party, they did it out on the football field. So we were in the stands and the bleachers and, you know, they play the national anthem. And I, I got butterflies and I start kind of just like, my, 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 um, uh, was it my grandma? She was standing next to me. I, I'm like, kind of like swaying and rocking. That's what I would do on the field. And she like bumps. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, Oh, I didn't even realize. Cause it's like, it's just so ingrained though, that feeling. Um, and so like, yeah, seek that, find that, you know, in your business and your prospecting, like ask the hard, if every time you go to ask this question, it makes you feel like uneasy. Like that's the right question to ask, you know, like go find those feelings. Yeah. And they, um, you know, in, in the book, they talk a lot about, so, so the author, again, uh, Nate Zinzer, he works with a lot of like elite performers. And in this part about cueing your conviction, what you're talking about, Colton, like the swaying back and forth or whatever is, is the elite performer. When they start to feel those butterflies, they have these self affirmations. They say, instead of like this, you know, cause you're feeling that fight or flight, Mm -hmm. They he talks a lot about the importance of having a self affirmation to say let's go this is what you are this is what you've prepared for this is your time to shine 
you know, let's go, baby. Like whatever your thing is, is like that, that positive self reinforcement, that self talk. That's the other important piece with cueing your conviction, which, which is part of that pre performance routine. The next thing is breathing what they say, what, what they call breathing your body. So there's a great quote actually from, um, her name is Dr. Belissa Vranick. She wrote the book, Breathing for Warriors. She said this, focus on my breathing means I can let my body and mind tap into what it knows and has practiced so that my emotions cannot interrupt it. And I love that is like, just focus on, on your breath and allow what you've prepared for to take over. Because what we see all the time is so agents are just like thinking about what do I have to say next? What do I have to do? What do I have to say? If you just focus on, I used to actually have this sticker on my desk when I prospected. It's like, stay calm, just breathe. You know, and that, and I had a candle and it's just, you focus on the, on the breathing and then you allow the preparation to take over. Mm. You know, you, you allow your abilities to, to take over. And you're, and it helps to release some of that anxiety. Here's my biggest pet peeve back to sports is I'm, if I haven't said it before, I'm a big golfer and used to play, you know, like Colton, I wasn't the starting QB, but I was on the golf course playing competitively. And, um, it's when somebody is under pressure in a tournament playing, whatever, whether it's with buddies or whatever, and they are getting extremely frustrated about their results mm. in the moment. And they're expecting to, because it's a tournament, it's a high pressure situation. They're expecting to win the tournament when in reality, they're a 20 handicap and they should never break 80, 100, right? But they're expecting it because that's what they want. That's where they're at. And I've seen the same thing. It's like, you know, in pressure, you're only as good as your preparation. You're only as That's good right. as like maybe a percentage of it. So under those situations, so we get into a listing appointment, we get into X, Y, Z, and we haven't prepared to be in that situation. Yeah. We're a 20 handicap, we're brand new, and we're expecting to take every listing. Yeah, go ahead, Colton. And, uh, I, there, I, I fully agree with you on that too, but, but even going further, I, I would say where your expectations are placed is important too. Cause that expectations are so important. Keep it on the golf thing. I, there, I know you've seen this interview and it's kind of like this meme now with, with Tiger Woods. Like when he, it was like his first pro tournament he was going into the guy was interviewing him and, and he was like, you know, what are you thinking? And Tiger's like, Oh, I'm, I'm coming in this thing fully expecting to win. And like uh, golfers at that time didn't really have that mentality. And the interview just kind of like sits yeah. there and laughs like, you'll yeah. learn young guy like you'll learn yeah. and he goes on to win the tournament that was like the biggest comeback to an interview of all time so those were his expectations but it's because he purport per, he prepared he practiced for yeah. to what you were saying agents who are like golfers who are a 20 handicap maybe your expectation is just making solid contact on this ball right or or right. hitting the right shot and so if you you know haven't prepared your listing presentation or you're not as you know, you're not an Asher Black or a Ben or a Brandon, like, hey, you know what? I didn't have the best appointment. Obviously, I didn't take it, but like, I hit all the high points. I promised myself, I asked the question, I promised that was good. Like, that's progress. Yeah. So, so, check this out. Having expectations in the right place is yeah. important. Go ahead, Ben. I'm sure you, I, I want to jump in here. There's so much. <laughs> there. Well, I, I think, I think confidence is um, knowing who you are regardless of the result, right? So, like, but Tiger prepared unlike anybody else. Every piece of confidence he had is because any doubt he had, he outworked it. He worked that lack of confidence out of himself. And some days you don't win. Sure, somebody outworks you or whatever. But like having that confidence, knowing who you are, knowing what, you know, expecting a good result, wanting a good result. But at the end of the day, it doesn't change who you are based on that result. Go okay. Ahead, Brandon. So the book, I, I was like, Colin said he didn't read the book, but then he brought the exact quote from the book. <laughs> no kidding. I, wow. so, so he brought up that exact interview. Really? It, oh my yes. God. Wow. And he talks about the fact of why Tiger said that. And it's exactly what Ben's mm -hmm. saying. It's because his confidence account 
was so full that nobody outworked him. We go back to, you know, the first thing we talked about, the confidence account. Tiger's confidence account is so big because it's so full because of his work ethic. Nobody is outworking him when it comes to preparing. So therefore, he can come on an interview and speak with confidence and conviction, not based on a result to Ben's point, but based on the work he's put in to coming to the mm -hmm. tournament. And that's the difference. And that's where we talk about expectations, going back to the real estate agent who's, or, or you, you, Ben, you talked about the person who is a 20 handicap with an expectation of winning the tournament and who has no chance. Why? It's because of cognitive dissonance. It's yeah. because they don't have work ethic. They don't put anything into preparation and expecting to win. Those two things don't line up. And that's most of our industry. Little to no practice. They don't have any confidence account whatsoever with their listing presentation. In other words, they don't have hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours of game film and prep the way that Tiger Woods would. But then they go into a listing appointment expecting to win the listing, not win the listing, and then get frustrated. It's like, how could you even be frustrated? Yeah. How? Why? What, what sense? What? How does it make any sense that you're expecting to win when you didn't put anything into the preparation? You don't have any confidence account to withdraw from. Mm -hmm. so, so that's, so that's the, the difference that you guys were saying is on one hand, you can speak with confidence because of the preparation. The problem comes in is when somebody has expectations that don't make sense because of a lack of work ethic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. So I want to just get to this last piece on, on the, this is we're talking about the, the pre uh, performance framework. The last piece of this is attach your attention. So this means to focus 100% on the prospect and what the prospect is saying and not on what you think you want to say next. So that when you're prepared, you don't have to just sitting there, someone's talking, you're like, okay, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to say? Because you're so well prepared, it's just comes second nature. You've internalized what to say, what to say, you've personalized what to say, you've gone through what we what we teach and, and coach to, that your level of preparation is unlike any of your competitors are willing to do. So when you're in a listing presentation, you don't have to worry about any of that. That comes natural. You could just be present. You could just, just focus, focus on, on listening. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. And then the fourth part of the framework is Ben, what you were talking about before, which is to detach from the outcome one hundred percent that we don't attach the win or the loss we attach our confidence with our preparation for the performance because if we know that we've done everything in our power to perform at our highest level win or lose you will come out feeling great like i killed that presentation and if i lose then i lose but i don't feel badly it's it's when you don't prepare when you don't practice, when you don't put in the work ahead of time, go in there and lose, do you start to get frustration frustrated? Do you start to get in deception to say, I don't know if this is for me? And so detaching from the outcome, that's part of it. The other part of it is communicating that you are detached from the outcome externally so that internally you let yourself off the pressure. This we talked about in the coaching call. Here's a practical example, boys and girls. You're at a presentation. You're at a listing appointment. Colton's the client. And I say, Colton, listen, a couple of things could happen from here. I don't know right now if I'm the agent for you or not. Well, through this discussion today, we'll, we'll find out if working together makes sense or not. But I'll be upfront with you. There are many times when I'm not the right agent. And if that's the case, I'll shoot you straight. Mm -hmm. And now you've let yourself off the hook from the outcome. Yeah. You've set it up front that you don't care whether you win or lose subconsciously and the prospect heard it. And now you don't come across like the desperate needy salesperson. You could just focus on being present, not what you have to say. Do I want to say the right thing or the wrong thing? I don't want to say this. I don't want to lose it. You've come right out of the gate to say, listen, it's perfectly reasonable that we may end this meeting today and not do business together. And oh, by the way, that's okay. <laughs> 
Spot on. I, I love that. Yeah. Me too. That's so good. Mm. So I don't know. There's 30 minutes of of building self confidence. There's a lot there. We could probably unpack it for a couple hours. But just go back. If you're listening to this, go back and really understand. It's one thing to hear the words. It's one thing to conceptualize and say, yep, yep, I get it. I get it. There's a difference between that and then doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's, and I, I'm telling you, there's, if, if agents would just focus more on practicing their skills, I think that confidence takes care of itself. I mean, that that's the long and short of it. That's right. Yeah. The, I, I think it's confidence in my head. I'm sitting here going through this recapping it. You, you just never arrive at it. I think it's right. like, you're, it's just different levels of, you know, like a black belt. Like you just, there's no end. There's no finish line. It's something, it's a craft. You're always trying to build it. The rents do every day and you're just constantly growing. Well, golf's probably the best example of that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Tiger Woods, you know, it, it's, it's, it's Rory McIlroy. It's all, all of them, this up and down, you know, and mm -hmm. it's not arriving to your point because complacency is the death of the human, human potential. It's like when you think you have arrived is the very moment you will fall off the cliff and you will mm -hmm. lose all of that confidence because you, you stop putting in the work because you think you've made it. So that's yep. a really good point. Absolutely. But it, yeah, good stuff today. Appreciate you guys, everybody in the live audience and the mastermind. If you have questions on this, we, you can throw them in the comments. We can continue, I think, Colton, to have that conversation after, after the show. But uh, let's finish out the week strong and uh, we'll see you guys back on Monday.